On this edition of Emeralds, Florida, we're heading to Palm Beach County on the southeast coast of Florida. Our first stop is the city of Palm Beach, where we'll visit Bucan, one of the hottest restaurants in all of South Florida. We'll meet Clay Conley, the talented chef behind the restaurant, and get to taste some of his signature dishes. Next, we'll head to Delray Beach to 32 East, one of the oldest and best restaurants in the area. We're going to get to sample some great dishes and wine pairings with Chef Nick Morfogan. Then we'll head to Jupiter in the northern part of the county. Guanabanas is our destination. It's one of the coolest outdoor restaurants that you'll find anywhere. We'll end with a story about a place called the Quantum House in West Palm Beach. It provides lodging and meals to families whose children are receiving serious medical care. We'll show you how dinners play a big role in helping these families get through a difficult time in their lives. And that's all coming up on this edition of Emeralds, Florida. Palm Beach County is located on Florida's east coast. It's a big county, folks, and there's a lot to see and do. Our first stop is downtown Palm Beach, where I'm going to introduce you to a chef who is really making his mark here in South Florida. Bucan is the name of the restaurant, and it opened in 2011. Clay Conley is one of the owners and the executive chef. Bucan is a really well-designed restaurant. It's well thought out, just like the menu. Why don't you tell folks at home a little bit about the concept here of the restaurant? Sure. We wanted to uh, create a concept for Palm Beach that was kind of a little more casual, a little less formal. We likened it to coming over our house and having dinner as friends. So we, we wanted to do um, a bunch of small plates so people could share and, and kind of experience food and wine in that, in that way. Clay has spent a lot of his career traveling and brings South American, Caribbean, and Asian influences to his menu. He's also big on using local farmers as much as possible. Hey, Darren, how you Hello. doing? Good how to you see you. Jody, how are you? How you doing? Pleasure. Good, Good to see you. We nice come to, to play you. in the garden. Prior to arriving at Bucan, the chef and I visited Swank Farms, one of his favorite local producers located just 30 minutes from the restaurant. So these are all red Brussels sprouts. That's here, true. Right? I mean, th this is the second year we were growing these. I mean, I think they're working well now. The demand is for small ones though, right? You got guys like Chef and I who just want the baby stuff, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. So we'll just come in here and just start cracking these off like this. We're gonna do a, a cool play on the Caesar salad. We do a warm Brussels sprout um, Caesar, which is I'm, I'm psyched quite about. popular. Look at that. that's, that's beautiful. Look at this box of goodies we picked while at Swank Farms. You can see why Clay is a fan of what they're doing. Tell us about that whole local movement of what you're doing here as a chef in South Florida. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that movement is, is everywhere right now. And people just want to see where their food's from. And I mean, Florida is a huge producer of, you know, a lot of the country's agriculture. So it's nice that we're blessed to have it down the street. Bucan has been a popular spot since the day it opened. That's led Clay and his partners to open a second restaurant right next door. It's called Imoto. It means little sister in Japanese, so it's Bukan's little sister. Uh, it's about a 30-seat, um, small Asian-inspired dishes. Uh, All right, I'm excited now. Cool. <laughs> Why don't we start here? Yeah, we we're just at the farm. We saw right? these today. Um, so we took the green Brussels sprouts, shaved them thinly on the uh, mandolin. Those are the purple ones roasted. We saute really hard sear the Brussels croutons. There's some uh, bocarones on top. Mm. Pretty simple. Really but, awesome. Thanks. Nice. And then we go here. Yep. Uh, the short rib empanada, it's just a very traditional braise of short rib. That's another little uh, Peruvian influence on top. There's a, a mayonnaise made with ají amarillo. And then there's uh, salsa criolla, which is like uh, red pepper and onion and lots of citrus, uh, some vinegar. So it should be like acidic, fatty. Awesome. And then you have this baby here. I knew you'd like this one. This is uh, a hot dog panini. My mom used to make sauerkraut all the time. Uh, so I kind of grew up eating kielbasa and sauerkraut. It's uh, braised sauerkraut with caraway, caramelized onions, three different mustards. Look at this. Some gruyere. Some people put the chili. You know, I personally like it better without the chili or the Coney Island sauce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you can have it either way. Oh my God, it's a fun one. That's really awesome. Thanks. We'll bet you saw a few of those. Yeah, it's a dressed up hot dog. While we were at the restaurant, the chef prepared one other dish for us. 
It was swordfish that he marinated for 12 hours in yogurt, mustard oil, garlic, turmeric, ginger, chili powder, cumin, and coriander. Then he pan seared it. In a separate saucepan, he cooked the cauliflower that we harvested earlier in the day and red onions until they were caramelized. Then he added chickpeas, curry, tomatoes, along with some fish stock and coconut milk. He combined all of that in a bowl, added the swordfish, and topped it off with some of the Swank Farm's micro herbs we picked. And then this is uh, micro cilantro, which obviously works with this. Right from the farm. Yeah. Now it's on the table. Yep. Beautiful dish. Thanks. Look at that. That is awesome. Oh my God. Fabulous. Unbelievable flavor, Chef. Thanks. Thanks for having us uh, yeah. at your house. I really yeah. appreciate it. It's been fun. Stay with us, folks. Next, we're heading to downtown Delray Beach, home to over 100 restaurants, and we'll hit one of their best, 32 East. We'll be right back. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by Discover the Palm Beaches and Boca Raton, the best way to experience Florida. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by Visit Florida, promoting tourism in the Sunshine State. Our next stop in Palm Beach County is Delray Beach. Atlantic Avenue and the surrounding streets house more than 100 restaurants. We're going to take you to one of the oldest and best in the area. 32 East opened in Delray Beach in 1996. At that time, the culinary scene in Delray was nowhere near as sophisticated as it is now. Today, when you walk down Atlantic Avenue in downtown Delray, there are, at last count, 111 restaurants to choose from. As you might imagine, you have your choice of just about any type of cuisine you want to try. But for a lot of people, 32 East is still at the top of their dining list. Nick Morfogan has been the executive chef and partner at 32 East since 1999. Chef, tell me what you guys' philosophy is here at 32 East. The, the one word is fresh. You know, we keep it as fresh as possible. Um, and Florida has really evolved uh, since I've been here. And uh, a, lot, a lot of real talented people, farmers and, and beer makers and cattle ranchers, you know, producing great beef. And uh, it wasn't really like that when I was here, or it was, it was happening, but I wasn't aware right. of it. I don't think most people were. We visited 32 East in January, and I was intrigued by the fact that the selections change every day, depending on what the freshest ingredients available are. One of the other things that makes 32 East such a great dining choice is the attention paid to food and wine pairings. I know that you and your partner, Butch, uh, are f just fanatics about wine. But you guys do a lot of food and wine pairings for your local customers. Constantly. Constantly, Constantly yeah. We're fortunate enough to have a clientele now that, that gets it. All right, let's, let's talk about the first, first pairing here. This dish is really special because I've gotten to know a couple of divers in the area that are certified and that have a license so I can buy from them legally. This hogfish was speared this morning and, and there, there are very few restaurants that can say that, you know, I'm, the ocean's a mile that way. And so for years I wasn't, I wasn't utilizing these guys and finally it, it all worked out. And so this hogfish was speared this morning. He also grabbed a few Florida lobsters, which we're in the middle of lobster season right now. And everything here is local. The, the, the upland crest is from Swank Farms. The beets are from another farm down the street called Green Cay. The, the grapefruit is Indian River, which is north a bit, and a little squeeze of lemon and some sea salt, and that's it. That's and, but the lobster is cooked, and the fish is cooked with the acid. The chef selected a Sauvignon Blanc to go with the seafood. It was a great choice. That's a great pairing. Really great pairing. And now? It's corn, corn stock made from the cobs, pureed basil into it, a tiny bit of cream, and that's really it. That's the soup. And the, and the bruschetta is the tomatoes, cooked down a little bit of honey, red wine, vinegar, onion, touch of garlic, a little basil, a grilled piece of bread, and that's, and that's it. That's summer, uh, you know, tom everywhere. Tomato jam. It's summer, but it's January, right. and I love it. Yeah. It is just bursting with corn and corn flavor. So balanced, so delicious. Again, another home run here. What did you guys match with this? This is an a ancient uh, grape called Picpoul from the Languedoc region of France. It's a high acid wine, and it literally means to sting the lips. Wow, really delicious. 
but now you're adding that corn element, yep. which just really adds that sweetness to it and balances. It's really, yep. really, really well done. Awesome. All right, this last dish. This is a mangrove snapper. Most people around the country know red snapper, uh, but the mangrove snapper is just sweet and delicious. Also speared today, so a slightly bigger fish. Um, and then we've got some heirloom tomatoes, cook them down with some eggplant, a little micro herbs from, uh, from Swank, a little olive oil. And, and for this, we have a rosé from California. What a great, I mean, that is like a perfect match. Before we left, Chef Nick prepared one more dish for us to try. It was a skirt steak with red onions and shishito peppers, along with an arugula salad with cherry tomatoes in a honey bell orange vinaigrette. The salad was all locally grown ingredients, and other than a little salt and pepper, nothing else was added to it other than a vinaigrette. The steak was a pretty unique piece of meat, as it's a cross between a Wagyu and a Black Angus. The chef paired a California Rhone-style wine with the dish, and it was just a perfect end to a great visit to 32 East. Delicious. Great job, chef. Thank you. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. Coming up next, we're heading to Jupiter. Guanabanas is our destination, and this is one of the coolest outdoor bar and restaurant that you'll find anywhere. We'll be right back. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Our mission is to protect, educate, and promote Florida's hospitality industry. Emeralds, Florida is sponsored by Fresh from Florida Seafood. Experience a rare delight. Now, I'm going to take you to a really cool place in Jupiter, the north part of Palm Beach County, Guanabanas. Let me tell you, this place got started as a sandwich shop by a bunch of surfers, but I'll tell you right now, this is no sandwich shop. Check it out. Guanabanas opened in 2004, and over time, it's become an institution in northern Palm Beach County. It's a 100% open-air restaurant and bar with woven tiki huts and banyan trees to shield people from the elements. You can get there by car or boat, and it's a pretty big party place, and the few times we've been here, it's been busy. The crowd is pretty diverse, with people of all ages enjoying the views, the live band, and the food. You've got friends hanging out at happy hour after work, families with their kids, or just couples enjoying a quiet afternoon or evening. John Sullivan is a partner and general manager at Guanabanas. How do you describe this? It's very unique. Uh, we like to consider ourselves a full outdoor experience. You're underneath cheeky huts, you know, you've, you've got the, the wood and the water and, and all the, the rock and all the foliage and all that. Plus, we have a, a bar that goes crazy seven days a week. We do live music three days a week. They also take their food very seriously. Vinny Troupier is the executive chef at Guanabanas. He took me behind the scenes to show me their inventory tracking system for all of the fish they buy. It's quite an operation. We buy it and get it in three to four days a week. Um, our crab is shipped in twice a week. Um, we work night and day uh, to get as much fresh fish in this restaurant as we possibly can. You, you can see here, I write my menus every day, day and night, lunch and dinner. I have triple tail lemon butter for lunch, but for dinner you can come in and have golden tile. I and it's it. just on what I have is the absolute freshest that is available, I try to put out to the customers. That's fantastic. You got some fish to look at? Absolutely. Awesome. Over here. Uh, this week we've gotten some fresh golden tile. That's a really um, nice fish. Um, and also here we have triple tail. When I hear that triple tail is on the menu, triple tail is what I'm going to order. Absolutely. With all this talk about seafood, it was time to try some of their dishes. So we'll start with the clams. Those are actually what's called a Sunray Venus clam. It's a local Floridian clam. They bury themselves vertically as opposed to horizontally. Yep. And so that creates that big foot, which is the meat, and makes it really sweet. And those come from the Pine Island area, okay. Sanibel. Now the dish in front of me. Okay, that in front of you is the pecan boniato. It's a Cuban sweet potato. We candy pecans, grind it all up together, and we saute it on the flat top. It's finished with a jalapeno cream sauce, and all of our fish changes daily, so the fish that's breaded can be anything. Fantastic. This is our uh, shrimp skewer. It's a uh, sweet chili grilled shrimp skewer with our crab cake and the shrimp come from Cape Canaveral, and the crab cake we source from uh, over in Pine Island as well. Gets shipped to us three times a week. That's a good crab cake. <laughs> Thank you. What other things can people find on the menu? We have a smoked fish dip, which down here 
in South Florida big is, is big time. And we smoke everything ourselves. Our wings are smoked. You know, we do southern pulled pork, and that's all smoked. And That's yeah. fantastic. John, I want to thank you so much for having us Thanks and so your much. hospitality. Next, we're heading to West Palm Beach. There, we're going to visit a special place that helps families whose children are receiving serious medical treatment. And we'll show you how dinners play a role in helping these families get through a difficult time in their lives. We'll be right back. Emeralds Florida is sponsored by VisitFlorida.com. Find out what the sunshine can do for you at VisitFlorida.com. Our last stop in Palm Beach is to show you something a little different. Something very special where the local community comes together to help people in need. And dinners are a big part of the story. Check it out. Zurich is a five-year-old native of Porto, Portugal. She has a congenital limb deformity and has had five surgeries so far to correct it. Along with her parents, Helena and Pedro, she's been staying at a place called Quantum House since June of 2012. Roberta Journey is the executive director of the Quantum House. The families that come and stay with us are here because the most precious thing in their life is in a bad spot. They have a child that's ill, they have a child that's been injured, and they need a place to stay. So that's what we do, we take care of those families. Quantum House is located on the campus of St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, and it's funded solely by contributions. It's really the community that has wrapped their hearts around us and our mission and find value in what we do. And that's how we keep our doors open. Many of the families who stay at Quantum House are from out of town or even from another country. So staying in a hotel for an extended period of time can get expensive. The Quantum House provides all meals and a bedroom that sleeps up to four family members. The only thing they ask is a donation of $35 a night to cover operating costs if the family can afford it. No one is turned away due to inability to pay. It does not preclude you from staying here. There are no medical treatments at Quantum House. It's designed to be the place where families can relax and get away from the difficult days many of them face. We're the safe zone. We're the oasis. So when a family comes over from the hospital after a really tough day and they cross that threshold, this is the safe spot. And the time when they really get to unwind is at the nightly dinner they all share. There's a guest chef each night. It's either volunteers from the community or members of the family staying there. Dinner is the most important part of the day. You know, food is the universal conduit. Amen. So they all come into this kitchen, and this is where the families start to trust us, start to trust each other. They support each other, and it lets them know that there's going to be a happy ending. We're going to get through this together. And all that happens right in this kitchen. For our visit, our friends at the Breakers Resort, Executive Chef Jeff Sims and Chef Ralph Figueroa came to lend a hand. Since the family from Portugal has been away from home and their native food for so long, we prepared a couple of special Portuguese dishes. My family is Portuguese. I know. So when I knew that I was coming here, it's probably a, a long time that you've had maybe a taste of your oh, homeland, yes, right? Yes, I miss. <laughs> okay, so. First of all, I want to uh, offer you a bacalhau. Bacalhau. Yeah? It's been a while since you've had that? Oh, yes. <laughs> More than six months. Mm -hmm. It's good. The entire group then join us to share another Portuguese dish, caldo verde, and the rest of the dinner that the chefs from the breakers prepared. It was just a great example of how the power of food brings people together and of a community providing a supportive home for families in their time of need. There's no best, uh, better place to stay in a situation like, like this. There's so many good things. Uh, we are really thankful. For oh, that's friends. wonderful. Your English is pretty good, my friend. Uh. <laughs> Much better than my Portuguese. <laughs> Before we leave you today, we have one last thing we want to show you. The Quantum House has a small putting green in their backyard and it turns out that Zurich is quite the little golfer. She practices her putting even though she can't really put any weight on her left leg. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a pretty hard time putting with both of my feet on the ground. Zurich's making these putts while keeping one foot in the air. And she's also learned English in the nine months she's been here. Pretty amazing little girl. 
Well, I will do it for us from Palm Beach County. Thanks to all of you for watching, and we'll see you next time.